Hey, my name is Ben. Thanks for stopping by. I'm going to show you how a pump down process works on a refrigeration unit really quick. So, I'm uh, just going to show you a couple of the primary components involved in this. Uh, so, upstairs, uh, when the thermostat has a call for cooling, there's a valve that's on the liquid line up top that lets the freon flow into the refrigeration coil up top. And uh, that continues to happen until the thermostat it cools down and the thermostat shuts off. It shuts off the flow of freon leaving the condensing unit essentially, but it's up in the um, evaporator. So then what happens is the compressor continues to run, pulling the vapor back out of the evaporator into the compressor, compressing it, sending it through the, um, the condensing coil, which is right here, and then into this, what we call a receiver. Um, so the receiver here, this little tank, sorry, um, will accumulate all of the liquid freon since it's not able to go anywhere. And what will happen is the pressure in this low side will get lower and lower until it gets below a certain threshold, which is set by the low pressure switch. In this case, I have a temporary switch wired in here because the pressure switch was the component that failed, so I'm waiting to get one in here. But I've got it set up so it'll shut the unit off, hopefully around five or 10 pounds and then it'll turn the unit on around 20 pounds or so. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go upstairs now and I'm gonna turn the thermostat down so that the cooler uh, releases the Freon and then um, I'll turn it back down again so that it shuts it off and you can watch how when the pressure comes up the pressure switch will turn on the compressor and then when the pressure comes back down the pressure switch will shut the compressor back off again. So, uh, I will get this set up here. I'll run up and turn this out as quick as I can. And now you can see that it's pumping back down again, and it shifts it off. There we go, right at about 10 pounds. I'll have to look back and see what pressure it turned on at, but that should be adequate for the way it works. So this is probably my um, the best way to have a refrigeration system run where after it's done cooling, it pumps all the Freon back into that receiver, and uh, then you have no possibility of liquid refrigerant reaching the compressor or migrating to the compressor while the system is off. If you have a system where it just shuts the compressor off and it doesn't pump down, then it can work and a lot of units do operate that way, but you have slightly higher risk of Freon getting back to the compressor if uh, something were to uh, be done incorrectly. So I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please subscribe. Uh, to the channel and uh, hit that little bell icon if you want to be notified about future videos and please rate this up if you could. And I'll leave a link in the description to uh, the refrigeration gauge I use if you're interested in that. And again, yeah, thanks for watching and we'll talk to you in the next video.